Okay, here we go again. Um, this is an opinionated guide to pandas, uh, and today we're going over group operations. So, to be very explicit, we're going over group by stuff. Um, this is one of the most common things you will do in pandas. Um, this is, uh, I don't really know even how many times that I have done it over the course of my lifetime, probably in the thousands, if not tens of thousands of times that I have made pandas do a group by operation. So if there's one thing that you should know and you should really know well, group by operations. So we're gonna be going over a couple of different group by operations. So first, we're gonna be talking about the pandas group by. Uh, this is basically the first, the start, the initiation of the group operation. And then we'll be going over three different group operations. Ag, uh, this is the big one. This is the the one that if you want to just sort of stop the video after, just stop the video after. It's, it's, the, the, uh, it's the one you need to know. Uh, filter, it's useful. Um, yeah, it, it has its places. Uh, and then the transform, uh, it basically has a single use. Uh, and I'll just show it to you since you may as well just know it. Um, so let's start off with the data set. We're gonna be importing Seaborn here so we can get the tips data set. The tips data set basically has some total bill stuff and then we have the uh, amount of money that they tip and some details about the party. Um, so we're gonna be using this data set in order to do all of the examples with group by. So let's start off with group by. Um, so the group by operation starts by specifying the columns that you want to group by. So in this case, we can go ahead and specify the column sex and the column smoker. So we want to group by what gender they are, and then we want to group by whether they smoke or not. Uh, the group by will go ahead and will give you a group by object. And this group by object is basically saying like, hey, I, have, as the object, have been initiated. You can, you can now perform your special group by operations on me. Um, it's not super important. There are some things you can do with it, but I never do them. So uh, as this is the opinionated guide to pandas and you sort of want to see how a, a real data scientist might sort of do this stuff, and I'm sure there's other things you can do. So whew, enough caveats there. Uh, don't worry about it. So now that we've gone ahead and gotten a group by, so in this case, a tips group by, so we've readied our tips data set to be grouped by sex and smoker, we can compute things. Uh, and the best way to compute things is with the ag operation. Um, so the ag operation will take aggregate functions. So think of taking a full data set and compressing it down to a single number. That is an aggregate function. So mean, standard deviation, the median, um, the 25th percentile, uh, the kurtosis, uh, stuff like that. Um, so all those types of functions you can go ahead and apply. Uh, and you can even apply some cool functions like the uh, first. So this will just get the first thing that it sees in each group uh, as specified by the index ordering. Um, so in this case, uh, I want to go ahead and I want to apply different aggregate operations for different columns. And ag lets you do that by passing in a dictionary. So in this case, I want to go ahead for the day column, I want to grab the first value there. For the total build column, I want to see how many total bills are in the group. So I want to get this size. Um, and then for the tip column, I want both the mean and the min of the tip column. Uh, and let's see what this does. So I basically take my tips group by, I call the dot ag function, I pass the dot ag function a dictionary, and it will give me back a result. Um, this is all the data. Um, now notice this data is really funky. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that, that kind of sucks, but we'll, we'll get through this. But let's sort of uh, first start off by sort of seeing what we've got here. So for the tips, the minimum value tips if for male smokers is $1. For male non-smokers, it's 125. For female smokers, it's one. For female non-smokers, it's one. The mean value tipped is three, four, not, blah, blah, blah. Um, the total bill size, so the size of the male non-smokers, so the number of male smokers is 60, the number of male non-smokers is 97, the number of female uh, smokers is 33, the number of female non-smokers is 54. Um, so we got all that information by doing this one ag function. And it's pretty fast. Um, now, there are caveats here. There are specific functions. I don't know why this is, and I hope pandas will change this. And maybe by the time you're sort of watching this, uh, they have changed it, where doing an ag with just this function or calling this function itself on the data frame is faster. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, I've been in those situations before. If you're in a situation where the ag function is taking over a minute, go ahead and Google. You know, what, what's the problem with my ag function? I, I hate to sort of su uh, suggest this, um, 
but it's something I've run into a couple of times in the past where I've gone ahead and I've tried to, specifically with this guy right here, getting the first along with some other uh, um, um, aggregates such as the, the mean or the min or something like that, for some reason it just slows down the ag function so much. I don't, I don't necessarily know why. So it is a bug, uh, hopefully it will be fixed. But let's get back to the details. So now that we've gone ahead and applied these aggregate functions to different columns over our data frame, across the groups, uh, male smokers, male non-smokers, female smokers, female non-smokers, how do we go ahead and get this data in a usable format? Because you're, you're kind of seeing this here. We've got this weird column structure that looks like you've got two types of columns, and now we've got this multi-index thing. So first thing we need to do is we need to reset the index. Um, and so if you've not seen my pandas indexing and selecting video, check it out. Um, it basically goes over what to do or what to do in these sort of weird multi-index situations um, in the easiest way possible, in the way that I do, in, 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 the, in the most opinionated way possible. So uh, what I do is I always go ahead and I apply the reset index. Uh, and it takes uh, these, uh, these indices and it just goes ahead and converts them to columns. Easy enough. Now, the next thing is we've got these weird columns. So we've got a multi-index column. And I kid you not, this is a real thing. Because um, you see it literally right here, multi-index column. So these are the columns. It's a multi-index. Um, I get why Pandas does this. I wish they were almost a reset columns type thing uh, for this. Um, there's, there's basically two ways you can, you can kind of go about this. One, you can go ahead and you can stack. Um, so what stacking does is it takes the, uh, the one level of columns or one level of, of uh, rows and it transports them, I guess one level of columns and it transports it into the index or one level of index and it transports it into the columns. Um, stacking is really confusing, so I'm not gonna be going over it here and instead I'm gonna be going over it in a separate tutorial series which you will see right up here. So click on that, click on that link, pretty please. Um, if you wanna go check about stacking and, and unstacking. Otherwise, if you're sane and like me, um, you'll go ahead and do something like this. So you'll apply this little transformation that I've got here. Um, and it's a one line of code. You can Google it from Stack Overflow. Or um, if you're like me, you can sort of literally just keep this in, in sort of a notebook that you use for like common tools. Um, and what this will do is it will take the first value of that column and it will append a uh, double underscore to it and will get you the second uh, value that comes right after it. So now I've got tip underscore underscore mean, tip underscore underscore mean day first, total bill size. So in this case, this looks so much better for me. Um, now I sort of understand what's going on. Oh, okay, I've got my tip mean, I've got my tip mean here, I've got my day first, I've got total bill size here. Um, so just, just to sort of put this in perspective, I understand why pandas made multi-index columns. Um, but for your sanity, I suggest that, I really suggest just try it. Once you're in a multi-index column situation, just get out of it as, as, as fast as you can because it will make the rest of your life a little bit easier. Um, there's two ways to get out of it. One is with that stacking and stuff, which you can go check out my other tutorial for. Um, and my sort of do's and don'ts there. Or this other way, which I, I just find really useful. Um, again, it, you know, I, I'm sure Pandas experts probably have a, a better way and they're like, oh, well, of course, the multi-column, it actually allows you to do order, you know, log in operations, you know, on specific types of data structures. And I'm sure that is true. And I'm sure it is actually very, very useful. Um, but I've gotten by for a lot of my life without it. That being said, if you if you uh, find that they're really useful, uh, please go ahead and leave a comment below uh, and I'd be happy to, to have a conversation with you and, and basically learn from you. So the next common uh, group by operation is called the filter. Uh, the filter is common maybe two orders of magnitude less than the, or is used maybe two order, orders of magnitude less than the ag itself. So maybe for every 100 um, uh, ags that I've done, I've maybe done one filter, but I figure it's kind of useful to go ahead and describe to you as well. Uh, the group by filter operation is for excluding specific groups. Um, so that's basically what it's for. Uh, so we can go ahead and we can find, in this case, we look at time and day. We can find, um, uh, we can do an ag here in this case. Uh, we can go ahead and find the median uh, number of participants or number of people that are uh, in at a specific time and day. Uh, and then we can go ahead and exclude, excuse me, now we can go ahead and exclude times of day that are less than median size. So, um, 
it, it is rare that you'll want to do filter operations based on a group or based on group numbers, um, but it is not entirely uncommon. Uh, and so I present it to you here. Um, uh, yeah, if you want to forget about this, it's probably fine. But if you want to keep it just sort of way in the back of your memory, just so if you're ever in a situation where you want to filter out groups, uh, then it is useful. Um, the final of our operations here is called the transform operation. Uh, it's similar to a group by operation in that it applies a function to a group. Um, the idea behind it is that it applies a function to every single member of the group while also having uh, the, fulls, the full group's uh, data in scope. Uh, so in this case, you'll see this transform. You go ahead for each member in the group, we'll take the group's mean, we'll take this member and we'll divide it by the group's mean. Um, so that's what the transform is about. Um, it's basically only useful for normalization and standardization. I've, I've never used it for anything else, and, and I rarely actually use it for that uh, itself because oftentimes uh, normalization and standardization sort of comes after my data exploration. Um, if you guys know any other uses of transform, please go ahead and comment below. Uh, otherwise, I hope I have not uh, lodged too much stuff in your mental uh, cavity. So, that's it. Um, there are exercises on this topic. Uh, go ahead and check them out here. If you are interested otherwise, uh, I will go ahead and link some, some more exercises that, that I have sort of come in completely blind to. Uh, and you can sort of check how I do on those exercises. And maybe it's similar to you. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's worse. Um, it's always fun to check that out. Um, but hopefully this was useful. Uh, the aggregate uh, operations, so uh, doing the tips group by, so grouping by and then taking that ag, it's incredibly useful. And sort of knowing how to construct that dictionary, this sort of dictionary up here, is incredibly useful as well. Um, now there are lots and lots of different uh, functions that you can go and put in here. Uh, you can go ahead and, and find those out. There's a link up here uh, that actually shows you, so full documentation. Uh, it will show you some of the most common functions that you can put in here. Uh, this is one of those things that you, you, as you grow as a data scientist, you, you learn more and more different aggregate functions that you are interested in. Um, and you can always Google them or construct your own. So as always, I hope you have enjoyed this short uh, um, opinionated guide to pandas. So I hope you join me next time. Thanks.